About almost a decade ago, two outlaw motorcycle gangs in Quebec, the Hells Angels and the Rock Machine, fought over territory. The battle lines were drawn over the distribution of illegal drugs in Quebec. Rivalries and long-held grudges amongst powerful criminals in Quebec fueled the situation. There were more than 80 explosions, almost 130 incidents of arson, and 20 reported disappearances during the conflict. There were over 160 fatalities and over 200 injuries, and many of the injured were uninvolved onlookers. There had been rising tensions between the two gangs for quite some time by the early 1990s. The Montreal Mafia had ties to the Hells Angels. The Cazetta brothers, however, were connected to several criminal organizations, particularly Francophone ones. As a result, the Hells Angels could not grow while Cazetta was in charge. Meanwhile, Boucher established puppet clubs, which are like many outlaw motorcycle gangs that recruit for the main gang. For decades, criminal motorcyclists have used the approach of forming puppet clubs. It provides a vast pool of potential recruits for various gang operations while shielding the parent club's core members from any involvement in criminality. The Rock Machine started its own version of puppet clubs not long after the Hells Angels did. In 1994, Boucher's chance finally arrived. In Florida, Salvatore Cazetta received a 10-year term for his role in a cocaine smuggling plot. Now that Salvatore Cazetta is out of the picture, Boucher can finally accomplish his goal of being a dominant drug dealer in Montreal. Boucher, with the blessing of the Hells Angels' mother chapter in Oakland, California issued an ultimatum that all drug dealers in Montreal must purchase their product from the Hells Angels. Upon receiving the threat, Giovanni Cazetta mobilized his contacts to form a coalition that would stand in the way of the Hells Angels' plan to establish a monopoly on the drug trade in Quebec. It was predicted to bring around $1 billion a year at the time. The Angels were already firmly rooted in the provinces of Quebec and British Columbia and were making waves in Halifax. They were well on their way to taking over the entire country of Canada. The largest drug market in Canada is located in Ontario, and if the Angels can dominate that province, they will have a solid foundation from which to expand into the rest of Canada. Cazetta and the heads of numerous other Montreal criminal families formed an alliance against the Angels, sometimes known as the Dark Circle. On July 13, 1994, the Bikers' Wars broke out in Quebec. In Riviere des Prairies area of Montreal, three masked men entered a custom motorcycle shop and murdered Pierre Doust, a member of the Death Riders, a club affiliated with the Hells Angels. The following day, the Rock Machine launched another attack, this time targeting a Hells Angels member. Later that day, members of the Rock Machine were apprehended by Surete du Quebec, SQ, the Provincial Police Force of Quebec, for plotting an attack on a Hells Angel puppet club in Montreal's South Shore. In a few weeks, all Quebec Hells Angels chapters agreed to join the conflict, with Maurice Boucher at the helm. Soon he would be heading over one of the most feared chapters of an international outlaw motorcycle gang. Many people on both sides were killed in this conflict that lasted from the summer of 1994 to the summer of 1995. The next year, on August 9, 1995, a vehicle bomb exploded close to where 11-year-old Daniel DeShrozier's was playing on a residential street in Montreal's working-class Hochelaga Maisonview neighborhood. Mark Dubé, a narcotics dealer, was driving the car and was slain. DeShrozier's was killed by a piece of metal shrapnel to the skull and was pronounced dead five days later. In the following weeks, the violence only escalated. An assassination took place in a parking lot, bombs were detonated at a strip club, a bar, and the home of a major player in the local organized crime scene, a pawn shop, a tanning salon, and a used car slot were all set on fire, and three members of a motorcycle gang were killed in a friendly fire incident. All of these events took place within a week in September 1995. The public was outraged by the police, politicians, and the legal system after DeShrosher's death. They were all blamed for failing to adequately respond to the crisis and prevent further deaths. At least once, law enforcement officials conceded that they could not halt the fighting. A former Montreal police official argued that drug use in the general public contributed to the Disrosher's murder and therefore the biker conflict. The passing of Disrosher's prompted two pieces of legislation. C-95, 1997, and C-24, 2001. Both laws increased the severity of penalties for those who participate in criminal organizations. After Deshrosheres was killed on October 5, 1995, Operation Carcajou was initiated. High-ranking members of the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, the Special Investigations Unit, and the Montreal Police Department worked together on this operation. Unfortunately, the political animosity and infighting between Quebec's separatist party, Quebecois government, and Ottawa's liberal government under Jean Chrétien 
led to little more than each side pointing fingers at the other. After 18 months, the biker war had already claimed the lives of 28 people by January 1996. The deaths of civilians wasn't the only shocking part of the war. The killing of prison guards Diane Levine and Pierre Rondeau in 1997 and the attempted murder of a third, Robert Corriveau, were the two of the most horrifying crimes committed during the Quebec Biker War. A man on a motorcycle opened fire on Levine as she walked home from her duty at the Bordeaux jail in Montreal. Rondeau was killed when the van he and Corriveau were driving were ambushed. It was eventually learned that Hell's Angels leader Maurice Boucher had authorized these killings. The September 2000 attempted assassination of renowned crime writer Michael Auger was another watershed moment in the biker war. In the parking area of his workspace, the Journal de Montreal, Auger was ambushed and shot six times in the back. Despite this, he managed to dial 911 from his mobile device. Within three months, he had recovered completely and was back at work at the newspaper. Premier of Quebec Lucien Bouchard lauded Augur in a speech to the National Assembly, praising his refusal to remain silent. Subsequent investigations revealed that the Hells Angels had placed a hit on him. There was a massive backlash against the hit on Augur. The event led to a truce between the Hells Angels and the Rock Machine. The Rizzuto crime family mediated the ceasefire between Boucher of the Angels and Frederick Fauscher, president of the Rock Machine. The peace agreement only lasted for a short time before fighting broke out again. The Rock Machine and the Alliance had been attacked and counterattacked for years until 1999, when the larger and more powerful Hell's Angels finally defeated them. However, in 1999, the Rock Machine allied with the Banditos, a global outlaw motorcycle gang. The Angels aimed to stop the Banditos from growing throughout Canada, especially into Ontario's prosperous drug trade. The Hells Angels patched over almost 200 Ontario bikers in December 2000. Operation Springtime, a significant police operation, took place at the end of March 2001. Over two dozen local police agencies joined the Royal Canadian Mounted Police RCMP, in their massive operation. Morris Boucher and 41 of his associates were among the hundreds of motorcyclists arrested across Canada. This paved the way for the emergence of new Banditos-affiliated drug trafficking organizations in Montreal. The Banditos' good fortune, however, did not last long. In June 2002, authorities in Canada launched Operation Bandito to take down the Canadian leadership of the Banditos. In a single stroke, the entire organization was destroyed. This effectively ended the Quebec Biker War. And that's all the time we had today, folks. Hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon on your way out.